Hi there, time for another Camsys One Take tutorial. This time I'm going to talk about this here, the add column in the FX window and why it can be a bit of a newbie trap um, and why some people aren't getting the the final result they're looking for in an FX and how there are some fixes that aren't perfect and really how to use it properly. This is something that comes up a lot in the Camsys uh, programmers and user group on Facebook. Um, and the other day I answered the question using some dodgy diagrams on a bit of scrap paper and I thought it was about time I read it properly and give a full explanation. So what are we talking about? Well, here I've got one Sharpie. Uh, we'll set it at full so you can see the beam. Uh, add an FX, intensity, dim, chase and, well, it's not doing anything. Um, and it's a question that comes up. And why is it not doing this nice pulse that I want it to do? whether it's entire rig or one head, whatever. There's various reasons for it, but they all come back to the same explanation, and there's various ways to fix it, depending on how you're programming that FX on that day. Um, so someone busking might want to do it in a different manner to uh, someone doing a theatrical uh, cue list and stuff. It's, it's really something you need to play about and work about a bit more yourself. So. What I'm going to be talking about is, right now, let's get right in and see what's happening. So, as I said, here we've got a little graph at the bottom that's got 0 to 100% DMX value, and we've typed in at full. Now, at the moment, if you see, the add column is in plus, which means its lowest point is calculated from the value of DMX you've put in. Meaning, right now, the desk is is calculating this nice big curvy line that's a, a sine wave, which will be the output, but all of it is on top of 100%. Obviously, we can't create more than 100% of light, or if you can, you've won the Nobel Prize for uh, one making it a, a free energy. Um, but either way, the DMX signal can't go past 100%, and the desk can't work past 100%. So what's happening is, there is this, all these nice calculations being done, but they're all being rounded back to full, which is a nice solid line. How do we fix this? Well, there's two ways to do it. One, we can go at zero, which brings back the DMX back down. Sorry, let's just, I'm playing around with graphs here on another screen. So, which brings back this nice curve, because like I say here, we're on plus, so 0% plus the curve is this is the lowest point, so the 100%, which you see here in the size, is using up the full 100% of the intensity from 0 to 100, and that's getting us the nice curve, as you can see here in the output window. That's one way. The next way is, if we started off at full, is we can go to the minus, which is next one. But what's happened? Well, we've it may or may not worry you. What what we've done is exactly this, but we've swapped our, uh, if you see, we'll swap our sign to a negative sine wave. That may not worry you. It may. If it's just a final look of some lights flashing across a stage, it doesn't really matter. But that's another way to do it. And it's also a good way to do it if, say you're busking, uh, something like me, sometimes, not always, I'll put intensity on one fader and FX's on another, uh, dim FX's. So if you've always got that dim FX, uh, dim intensity up full and you bring in an FX, this is a way to make it happen. Um, and it'll, over, not so much override, but it'll be calculated from that uh, that full value. So it'll just start bringing it down. So it's, the, the as you can see, the FX is actually forcing DMX down rather than pulling it up, which you, if you're like me, you mentally emit, so mentally view things as DMX starting at zero and, and your desk is starting to push it up. Well, in this case, it's the wrong way around. It's it's the desk is up at full and you're pushing the, the intensity back down again. Well, that's one way. Uh, the, la the next way, which to be honest for me, is the way I'll mostly put DMX values in. I need to get rid of this. And this is a we'll use absolute. 99% of the time now I'm using uh, an, a, a dim FX or RGB chases for LEDs and so on. I'll use this, which is absolute. Absolute basically means that 
the FX engine does not care two hoots what value you've, you've put in for your intensity. So at the moment, you see we, we're here at 100%. If I add in it, make it 20%, you'll see here in the output, we're going from 0 to 100. Add in 80%. 60%, nothing happens. It, the FX engine does not care what you've typed in. It's going to use that full spectrum or that full spread of the 100% which we've set, well, by default here. Okay, so that is a very good way to make sure your, your intent, like I say, color changes and um, intensity FXs are getting the full range as you want. So. Uh, RGB LEDs, if you don't have absolute, you're not going to get a full intense red. It's going gonna, it's gonna to leave it lower down and, and not get up to full, for example, if you've got another, say, a colour palette mixed in. Or colour palette, so, so you can have, let's say you've got your orange palette selected and you start doing RGB. Well, it's going to, you're only really, when you get to the blue, it's still going to be orange and it's going to be some strange mixes. So again, this absolute column here, or absolute option, is one of the best ways to get around that. So it's a case of what I've programmed in the in the FX engine is going to come out. Okay, let's keep going through the examples. What about the other way around it? So here we've got, uh, let's start again. Uh, we've got head number one selected, add an FX, intensity, uh, dim chase. Now I'm going to put this back. So at the moment, without adding any in, any intensity in, there's nothing here. And just adding the dim FX, it's doing what we want. Okay. But like I say, if we just bring in an intensity, uh, things mess up. So maybe you've got something coming in from another playback or something. So sometimes it's not the best way to do it. If you're programming things in, in a Q stack and you know that you're going in order, you can get away with that. It's not a problem. But let's carry on. Uh, and I'm going to go back to what Camsys and Magic Q used to do, which the default used to be normal. And what you'd see is, you see the output's only going to 50% and it spends a lot of time at zero. So we're just getting a little pulse at 50, a long time at zero, and a quick pulse at 50. And this is why, what you can see here in the graph is what's happening. So there's a little bit, half of the time is just doing that curve, and then we're spending a long time sat down here and nothing's happened. The reason being, as you can see, the bottom half of the graph uh, is just stuck below 0%. And again, just like you can't create 150% intensity, you can't, create anything below zero. So the curve's disappearing. So we, we've basically halfway rectified it, which isn't that useful. I mean, you, just, you see it's not making a nice pulse and we're most definitely not using the full intensity of the wave. Now what a lot of people used to do is fiddle with this wheel here and go, sorry, not the crossfade, uh, yeah, the size there, and hit this up to 200. And now you'll see we're going from zero and when it comes along and flies up to 200 and comes back down. Why is that not correct? Well, here's the graph. We're doing this massive steep curve and then it decelerates and then this massive steep fall again and again, time at uh, sat at zero doing nothing. And you'll see it's more of a kind of pulse. It's not a nice slow curve like we want here. You know, that, that and that are not, sorry, that and that are by no means the same thing. And like I say, there's no deceleration here. It's, it just ramps up. So, and the only deceleration is here at the top. And it just ramps down. That's how I started, I'll admit. Because I couldn't work this out myself. So again, there's another trap to fall into. So when do we want to use the normal uh, option? So if I go to side view, what I've done is hit focus this Sharpie at the corner of the room. The reason being is that if we now add an FX of position and just tilt, nothing else, so we're looking at side on, you'll see that the floor and the wall are being used as a scale and you'll see that it goes as far along the floor as it does up the, the rock. Really, it's going a bit higher up the wall. That's where we want to use normal. If we use plus, you see it's adding DMX from here that's the lowest point and it's going all the way back. 
minus, it's going to go up the wall from here. And again, it's going to reach its travel limit, sit there and wait, because there's a part of a curve being drawn that it's not getting to, that it can't physically do. But as you'll see, the lowest point is there. Absolute, well, what's absolute going to do? Absolute's going to work it from the centre, from 1 to 8. So it's going to take a 50% curve, so it's basically working the whole thing out from there. But like I say, in position FX is the default is normal, and it's correct to be that in most cases. In most cases, you want um, it a circle or whatever to start around the centre point you've focused on. Uh, I will be honest, 50 is quite high. And for this example, I'm going to shove it to 10%. So you'll see this distance along the bottom is about the same as this going up the wall. Now, it's not a perfect 45 degrees there, so it's not going to be exact, but you get the idea. Everything's been calculated with it from normal. Everything's been calculated from... Let me find the right graph, because I've drawn this. And add in this scale from there, this tilt position. So that, that's what's going on here. So I've reduced the, the the size, so the curve's not going as far each side, but it's all been calculated from that centre. There may be points where, let's say you've got lights pointing out towards the audience and you've put them, you've focused them just over their heads and you don't want to blind them. It may be that at that point, in this case, plus isn't the right one, minus is the right one. So the audience is out here. So you've started here and it's starting to tilt a Tim up in the sky above their head and it's not getting into their eyes. A good example could be on a TV set. You don't want those lights shining straight down the barrel of a camera lens. But that's how to make sure. So you can start, set your lowest point with a, a tilt position and do a tilt them above the cameras and it'll never get down to them and you'll never get shouted at. Um, it may be something of a theatrical... Um, you're you're lighting a backdrop and let's say you've got the lights along the bottom you don't want them disappearing onto the floor you've got that position where they're just above the floor and with using this either the minus or the plus depending on which side you focus the lights with um, inverted or not you can get them shooting up and down the wall but starting from that point this that's really what it's all about um and i'm hoping that's cleared up this for a lot of people and it's really like i say it's it's a big newbie trap that a lot of people can fall into, and I did myself at the start, but 99% of the time, um, rule of thumb, take it with a pinch of salt. If you're using dimmer and colour FXs, put them in absolute. If you're using positions, put it in normal, and use your palettes to set where they're going from, and it'll work out from the center. So, uh, like I say, uh, intensities and colours, absolute, so the it's the, the FX engine that controls, Positions, use normal, but combined with a position palette to focus where you want that FX to happen. Uh, but, like I say, can be a bit more complicated than that, depending on a specific situation. But, as I say, I've shown you how to work out which situations and why. Anyway, as always, hope that helped, and thanks for watching.